All right, everybody, welcome back to Digital Marketers Content Marketing Certification. And in this step, we're going to be looking at the content types at the top of the funnel. So if we go back to our content life cycle, you can see that in the middle is where you're gonna find the different content types that we recommend at the top of the funnel. Uh, so those type, top of funnel content types are blogs, okay? Blogs are a very, very, uh, almost any business can benefit at the top of the funnel through the use of a blog and social media updates. These are kind of the top of funnel content types that are ubiquitous across all different uh, niches and verticals. But then you have things like infographics, photographs, digital magazines and books, podcasts, audio podcasts, video, right? Uh, micro sites. Uh, print magazines and newsletters, primary research. These are the kinds of things that we recommend at the top of the funnel to raise awareness about solutions, about uh, the products and services that you provide. All right, so let's take a look at each one of these in turn. So you talk about blogs. Now here's an example over here of you know Whole Foods using a blog to raise awareness, right? So um, that they sell uh, high quality, uh, organic, uh, locally grown type foods. All right. And they want to use their content to make, to make you aware of the fact that whole foods provides this kind of solution. So you can see here, this piece of content here called seven sensational spring side dishes. All right, and they are, they are showing you a recipe and of course, at the same time, sort of alluding to the fact that, hey, we sell all the things in here. We sell the, the carrots and the peas and the bacon and all of those things. And here's how to put them together to create a solution for you, which is, you know, uh, a nutritious, organic uh, food experience, right? Now over here at Digital Marketer, we've got our blog uh, that's talking about how to choose the right traffic source for your market. So in, in this particular blog, we're trying to make people aware that we know how to drive traffic. We know how to uh, run a digital strategy. And so we publish content that is making people aware of our solutions and maybe even making them aware of problems that they didn't know that they had in their business. All right, so social media updates are, you know, the, in the same vein. They're trying to raise awareness for problems and solutions, um, and products and services that you offer. You know, Airbnb here on the left, you can see a tweet here about 10 perfect Paris food experiences. You know, Airbnb is in the travel space, so they want people to be aware that they have a solution available in the travel space. On the right, you've got Dryer's Ice Cream, right, who's using Pinterest here to make people aware of all the different, you know, products that they that they provide in the ice cream space, shakes and floats and, you know, delights and all the different things that they that they offer at Dryer's Ice Cream, they are making available and they are blasting these things out through social media channels using content. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about a, a sort of high level understanding of something that I call the home base and the outpost strategy. Now this is actually a graphic from jeffbullis.com who does, you know, Jeff talks a lot about this strategy. And what, what we're talking about here is that you have a home base. And generally speaking, for your content strategy, that's going to be your blog, okay? And that's why Almost any business, I've, I've not run across a business yet that couldn't benefit from building a home base for their content, which is gonna be your blog. All right, now then you've got all of these outposts on the outside. Now these are the things that you don't own, but you do publish content there. So things like an outpost for you might be Pinterest or Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn. All right, these are the things that you don't own. All right, and so important to understand that why the reason we create a home base and outpost strategy is because this is where everyone is, okay? You've got large quantities of people gathering on these outposts, but you don't own them, all right? 
but you've got to go out and post your content here and then you're looking to drive people back into your home base out of these properties. All right, so these are your social media outposts. This is your home base. And from a content strategy standpoint, you need both, all right? You need a home base where you've got your blog and you need a, a set of outposts where all of the people are hanging out so that you can pull them back into your content on your home base, all right? So let's talk a little bit about another content type at the top of the funnel, which is infographics. Right, so you got a couple of examples here. You've seen these before. You know, this is a, 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 an infographic that was done by salesforce.com that's just talking about marketers and how they're part artists and part scientists. It's just an interesting way to display content that's educational for their market, right? And keep themselves in front of uh, their market, keep their solutions in front of their market. You know, Salesforce has solutions in the marketing uh, in the area of marketing and so they create an infographic that shows top of funnel awareness about you know marketing in general and then it's oh by the way you know Salesforce has has products in the marketing space um, you know what you've got here you've got another infographic here from after builders cleaning right so they're what is the anatomy of the perfect cleaner right and, he, and he's social and they like him because he, he shows up on time and this is an interesting way for them at the top of the funnel to say hey we do cleaning services and here's what you're looking for in a good a good cleaner photographs right so anybody that's in like the travel space like TripAdvisor shows here or uh, this kitchen design company who's a builder and, and they just take lots and lots of big beautiful photographs and use them at the top of the funnel to say wow look at this space that we just designed all right that raises awareness for what kitchen designs does and it's something that would be very appealing this photograph in an outpost channel like like facebook or pinterest or or whatever and bringing them back into their home base here at kitchendesigns.com. Same with TripAdvisor, 10 best hidden places in Ireland, right? TripAdvisor wants you to travel, right? They, they, they live or die by, based on whether people are traveling both domestically and internationally. So they create big, beautiful photographs of Ireland in this, in this piece of content, distribute them on their outposts and pull people back into the home base um, at the top of the funnel. Raising awareness. Oh yeah, TripAdvisor has information about travel. Um, and hey, you know, these photographs look beautiful. These, Ir these, these uh, photographs of Ireland look beautiful. I'm gonna go check out this article. And then again, it's a subtle reminder, TripAdvisor is there and they have a product and they have a service. Digital magazines and books are hot, right? People creating, um, uh, you know, it's just another channel for you to distribute your content and you can even use the content that's existing on your blog to push it out into places like Apple Newsstand um, and Amazon in order to get, get your top of funnel content into people's hands and raise awareness. You know, you've got, uh, you know, all kinds of people publishing these types of magazines at the top of the funnel, it's, a, it's very similar to the blog strategy, except in this case, you're using a digital magazine or a book. All right, so another, another type of content that you might use at the top of the funnel is a podcast. Again, this is just a, a way of packaging your content in a different way through audio and distributing it in a different way through things like iTunes, right? So that people can grab your content um, in another capacity. So, you know, if you're creating this podcast about real estate success, right, it might raise awareness and it will raise awareness if you do it properly as to what services and products that you uh, provide around the real estate market. So audio podcasts, you also could do video podcasts, like in the upper left hand corner, you've got Jay Bear, who's, a, who's kind of a social media guru, but he also runs an agency, right? He has an agency that does social media for large brands, and he uses um, audio or video podcasting for, in order for you to understand that he's an expert about a video podcast, or he's an expert about marketing, and um, that you should hire him for in, in his agency to do services.
you got Samsung over here, a large brand, just uh, showing you all the different fancy products and services and solutions that they have available at the top of the funnel, right? I'm a, I need this product or solution. I might find these videos uh, very useful from Samsung to become aware of what that company provides. You know, micro sites are another top of funnel content. Essentially, you're looking at building a blog about a specific uh, topic and then putting it on another domain, all right? Something completely different. Now, Cordell and Cordell has done this. We looked at this one earlier on in the certification. This is dadsdivorce.com, and it's a service provided by Cordell and Cordell, but it's actually on a different site than their main website. It's, it's a separate published micro site that's there to just raise awareness for the solutions that Cordell and Cordell provide. Print magazines and newsletters, you know, if you've got the, you've, you know, you could go digital and, and that's going to be much cheaper, but a lot of brands are going print, right, with, uh, with their content strategy at the top of the funnel. So things like Lego Magazine um, is there to create content. There's lots of cartoons and things in there of people using, you know, the Legos are actually animated, right, in the cartoons and then the child reads it and they say, I gotta have those Legos. Uh, the furrow is something that's been around for over a hundred years uh, and it's published by John Deere and um, just making people aware of, of, you know, the fact that John Deere is in the farming and agriculture business, right? And, and so the furrow is a print high, it's a high quality magazine printed it looks like anything else that's published um, and, and available on the rack in the newsstand, and yet it's really published by um, a, a, an actual corporation that, that has uh, a business model behind it. Morningstar has the fund investor. They have tons of these types of publications that they send out. And of course, you know, they sell a service around um, you know, the stock market. All right, so the, la the last uh, piece of content type that we will cover here is, the, is primary research. So, you know, it's difficult to pull this off because it's, it's a little bit intensive to get it done, but, and that's exactly why it's a, it's a powerful content type, is because there's not a lot of primary research out there. If you're able to create something like the social media marketing in, industry report, or uh, Google's zero moment of truth, research, right, that teaches you how to use Google better, essentially, and what they've learned by all the data that they've collected at Google, or what Social Media Examiner has learned by surveying its market, and then put that out in as primary research, you will get lots of awareness around that kind of content. All right, so in the next video, we're going to be talking about the metrics that we use to measure whether our top of funnel content is working. We'll see you there.